everyone, in this video I'm going to show you the difference between cubital tunnel syndrome and supinator syndrome of the forearm. Hey everyone, I'm Sebastian at Performance Play Sports Care, part of the locally world famous chiropractors in Costa Mesa, California. In this video, we're going to get right to it. I'm going to show you some examples in the Netter's book, which is the common book that people use to reference human anatomy. It's been around for a long time. As well as I'm going to show parts of my anatomy or arm and hand to show you different locations where you may have symptoms associated with cubital tunnel syndrome or supinator syndrome, which is more of the radial nerve. First off, know that these are very different conditions, and some of you may have been told you have one or the other. So let's get down to brass tacks and give you some basic symptoms and locations, because the location really does matter. With cubital tunnel syndrome, many of you are going to have sensitivity in the elbow right into this region. Not everybody does. Some people may uh, feel a little bit of snapping and clicking when they bend their elbow. I knew I feel a little bit of snapping right here. Also, many of you can perform a test called Tunnell's test, which is just putting pressure into the region and it zaps off and creates your symptoms into your hand. And so basically what this means is, is, is there's sensitivity of the ulnar nerve at the cubital tunnel. However, just know that just because it's sensitive here does not mean this is the exact location of entrapment. The entire nerve, the ulnar nerve, is sensitive when there's an area of compression. The same thing goes with the radial nerve too, which I'll talk about here in a second. People with cubital tunnel syndrome are gonna have sensitivity here. They may have a little bit of radiation into this part of the inner part of the forearm. I guess I'm showing myself, huh? So it's gonna be right here on the pinky side of the hand and even up into this region here. Many of you who have had wrist pain associated with some type of ulnar nerve compression oftentimes feel it in this region and it's super common to feel when you're cycling. Um, when people put their hands on the, on the, on the handlebars when they're, when they're riding their bike, sometimes this becomes sensitive. Numbness also too into these regions such as the pinky finger and half of the ring finger are pretty common when they're not as common with the other one. Actually, they're, they're not going to happen with the other one. Now, supinator syndrome is actually of a whole different nerve and I'll show you again on the book here in a couple minutes, so stay tuned for that. But also it's on the completely opposite side of the hand. And so right into here, or the elbow, this is the area of the supinator. The supinator is a muscle which supinates like you're holding a bowl of soup to your forearm and hand. It supinates the hand. It's almost like you're using a screwdriver and you're going like this, or you're kneading dough, or you're opening a door handle. Like all of these things may potentially create overuse of the supinator, which can create compression of the radial nerve as it passes right by. The locations in the hand are very different as well. Many of you will feel some ache, dull pain into this region, right into the center of the back of the forearm, which is right where I'm showing it myself. Also, you may feel stuff into the finger here, the back of the hand into here, and even into this finger here. It will almost feel like it's deep in your bone. Many of you will think, that almost, it almost feels like one whole bone, one whole structure, which is aching when you have something like this. I've had this myself. This is a very, very debilitating condition. Both of them can wake you up at night and create aching, stabbing, shooting, or that dull ache, that throbbing that you feel at nighttime. The good thing is that both of these are very treatable using the right rehabilitative approach or corrective exercises or stretches. Surgery is not needed in most cases. Now, if we're gonna look at the model here, this is first of the hand. I'm gonna get real close just so you guys can take a gander at this. This is gonna be a really important one, uh, mainly because a lot of you have been told that you have things like carpal tunnel syndrome, or you have um, cubital tunnel syndrome, like I mentioned, but also the um, supinator syndrome, pronator teres syndrome. All these things are problems where the nerve goes straight through the musculature and it gets entrapped or around the tunnel. Now, it's important to note that the location where the nerves innervate parts of the hand and create symptoms of various different types of the parts of the hand, because here's the thing, it, the back of the hand right here, we have the pinky and the ring finger right here, or half of the ring finger, and the back side of the hand and the front side of the hand here. This is the location where the ulnar nerve goes through uh, or innervates into the hand, 
and it doesn't go to the other areas. The reason why this is significant is because if you've been dealing with pinky finger numbness, but you also have symptoms into this part of the hand, which are said to be associated with your cubital tunnel syndrome, it's not. It's something else. The something else it could be is it could be a compression of both. It could be something that is compressing the ulnar nerve, which could be at the tunnel of Guyon in the hand. It could be at the cubital tunnels we mentioned, or it can be further. Usually up into the neck is super common, but you can also have an entrapment at the same time with something that's affecting the radial nerve, which is here. Earlier I mentioned that there are certain parts that you'll feel. You'll feel the back of the hand, you'll feel the thumb area, it'll feel like a condition called the Quervin syndrome, or it'll feel like, just almost like thumb arthritis, which is presenting right into this region here. It's gonna, you're gonna, you may say like, well, it feels like I just maybe got an old thumb. I've been uh, using it a lot over the years. Maybe, but it could be something like this, especially if it's spreading up into the middle part of the back of the forearm which I mentioned before, which is right into here. In yellow, you're gonna see things that are innervated by, or regions that are innervated by the median nerve. And this is gonna be more of carpal tunnel syndrome or even a pronator syndrome, which is the pronator muscle on the front side. Now notice these go to the tips. The radial nerve does not go to the tips of the fingers. So if you have problems into the tips of your fingers, it is not gonna be the supinator syndrome or anything solely innervated by the radial nerve, but it's probably gonna be more at the neck. The same thing goes with um, if you have numbness of the pinky finger. If you also have combined regions of sensitivity in these other areas, whether they're red or yellow, uh, potentially orange, because I'm colorblind, then you actually have more going on than just cubital tunnel syndrome. Now, the reason why I wanted to do this video in particular today, showing you the regions of the hand in association with cubital tunnel syndrome and supinator syndrome is because many of you have been misled or that you've looked on Dr. Google and, and you're believing that you have one or the other, but if you have many fingers innervated or many fingers involved, different parts, front and back of the hand, and multiple nerves, radial nerve, ulnar nerve, median nerve, and they're all being affected, at least to some degree, then you probably have something else which is higher up where they all start. We've met many people at Performance Play Sports Care who have hand wrist symptoms, seemingly supinator syndrome, seemingly cubital tunnel syndrome, but they really just have a neck condition. It could be something like a disc herniation, which is not currently too symptomatic, but there's just stiffness of the neck, or it can be something like a stenotic type of change, which is bony formation around the outer uh, little areas where the nerves come out of the neck. This is important because where you get your treatment performed is going to dictate how well you succeed and how, how well you recover. If you only do hand therapy, but you have a problem higher, you're missing a gigantic part of your recovery. So I wrote a book on numbness of the hand. It specifically covers ulnar nerve as well as cubital tunnel, as well as different areas where there's entrapments at for the ulnar nerve. Please pick that up. There'll be a link in the description. Now, if you're just looking for exercises and stretches to do, just know on YouTube, we do have many videos on these topics. However, with that being said, one stretch or one exercise can make one person better, but one person worse. The reason being is because you may have different things creating similar symptoms. If you want a specific program to follow, reach out to us. We'd love to help you. Our link is in the description. We have consultations. We're in Costa Mesa, California, but we see people virtually for these things as well too. Subscribe to the channel, like the video. We'll see you guys next time.